let us see how we can add a constructor injection to our fragment so let's say we have some dependency and we added that one to our fragment constructor and how we can do this kind of dependency injection using a diver so first of all we'll go to our let's say i think i'll just create a new package over here and call it as a ui so let us try to separate it and over here uh, let me create a new fragment and uh, let us add a fragment with a view model because this will add some of the more dependencies for us and uh, later we may be using so fragment i'll just say currently we have any fragment i think we have a home fragment so let me call it as a main fragment and just finish this one and that will go and create a fragment for us with our view model and that will also add some of the uh, gradle dependency for us and i think yeah that is the view model and the live data and that is the one so three dependencies are added when we add a view model because we need the live data and the view model and now let's go back over here to our fragment and for now i think we'll just provide this particular layout directly from our fragment constructor so this fragment if you go control and click and it will take you to it's uh the source code over here it says that we can add a rest layout of our content layout so basically previously we were not able to do it but uh, recently they have added this particular fragment where we can add a our layout directly to our this particular fragment constructor so we'll just add and uh, we can just uh, particularly remove this one for now and uh, then what we'll do is we'll go back to our dependency and we will enable the build feature over here so the build feature will be to add our uh, view binding over here so let's go and uh, view it's not safe view sorry it should be build features if it you are with features and i will say a uh, view binding which should be of a true and then i will just go and synchronize this one and uh, okay so that should be fine let me synchronize and let's go back to our uh, main fragment over here and then uh, we will go over create a binding over here so i need a private var and underscore vi and binding which will be of the what we have is a main binding so a binding should be a main fragment binding and this should be of the nullable type first of all and then second we will create a private var of the binding and this binding will get its value from our another underscore binding value so here and after that what we have is this binding okay so we need to get first of all this binding we need to set the value so underscore binding which is of equals to the main fragment binding that in fact i need to inflate the inflator and then i have need to pass the container over here and then false over here as uh, attached to parent now i can just uh, return the value from here underscore binding dot root so this will give us a view binding over here and i'll just I'll say that's not no and yeah that should be fine for us and one thing that we have to do is uh, we need to call on destroy view so whenever we call this on destroy view we want to destroy this binding which we can set it as a no so this is a good practice because we this binding will uh, keep a reference for a lot of our view so we don't want that one to be preserved when we destroy our view so that will preserve for our uh, memory leak so if if your application has a memory leak basically there is some uh, view but view is leaking view is leaking some memory because it will keep reference to some of the views 
so we should be always able to clear it out and we just have to set it to null so that will uh, help us to reduce the memory leak in our fragment itself so the next thing that we will do is i think we don't need this one and uh, then other thing that we will do is uh, for now i think we will not make use of this one too so just remove that one a uh, few model we will be initializing on the later and uh, then we will just go back to this uh, main fragment and uh, let me change this uh, frame, frame layout to uh, constraint uh, layout i think yeah so that should be fine and then for this text view i'll give an id of uh, let's say uh, dv name so here we will populate the dv name and for this one let us constrain it to i think for this constraint layout for this one i need to constrain it somewhere so let us constrain it to wrap the content and wrap the content over here and uh, then let us constrain it to the center of our view so i think i can just do it from over here and uh, horizontally okay and then we have this particular text i can just remove it for now and then i'll also add a one more button in case later i think we are going to use it so just make it a 16 and then horizontally in the parent okay and then i'll just keep as a btn button and i'll navigate from this main fragment to the, the home fragment just refactor that one and then we we'll just set the button to the uh, home fragment okay so we got i think that's the view that we need and uh, then uh, what we need to do is over here in this particular main fragment what we will require is let's say a uh, private val of we will require as a data based name so we will require a data based name which is a type of the stream so we'll require this dependency on our main fragment so what we will do is uh, we will get this uh, name and what we want to do is on our view created so when we have on on view is created we just want to particularly get that value so we have a binding right binding dot uh, we will get the i think yeah dv name da name uh, that's okay so just never mind so we just have a da name dot um, text and then i think i have to set it equal to not null over here and uh, then we have a text which is of equal so i get it from the database name so now we have uh, uh, some constructor parameter for our main fragment so how do we provide is over here so that is the case so basically we are not able to do it so we have to create some uh, factory over here fragment factory so where we can add a dependency using that uh, fragment factory so let's go to the util over here and i'll create a new class over here and call this one as a uh, app fragment uh, fragment factory so i have fragment factory or you can give any name and uh, here we need to inject it so i'll make use of inject and i'll pass the constructor and here we will pass the i need a database name so i'll just get the annotation of the database name that we have previously created a qualifier of database name and i'll just say as a private val of a database name and this is a type of the string right so and also let us add uh, another dependency of the api key that we require so private val of the api key and that should be of the type of the string too so we got that one and then this will extend the another class of the FRAGMA fragment factory. So we will extend the another fragment factory from Android X fragment.app. And just add the constructor. And now we need to override the one function instant, instantiate. 
So this is the override function that we have to override over here. And here we can set that what we want to do. So we want to return from here. Uh, return, uh, let's say when condition, return when we pass the class name because it has a constructor of the class name. So when we have a class name and we will go and check the if we have our main fragment that we have, right? Main fragment class, sorry, main fragment class.java dot the name. So if the name of the class is match this one, then we are going to return that particular main fragment and pass the constructor value of the, uh, we need to pass the database name. And else uh, we have to just, even the else part, we can just return this particular super call. So we are not going to pass return any new fragment constructor over here. Also, let us go to our another fragment. I think we have created previously a one home fragment over here. So let us add a constructor also over here. So what we need is let's say a private val of uh, we need the API key. And this is a type of the string, right? So, and this should, we should add a qualifier over here because we have a same type of type of the string. So this is of API. We need the API key over here. Okay, and that's fine. And then, where is the error? We are having some error over here. So I think we can remove this one because we are not going to use that one anyhow. And uh, then let's go back to our fragment fragment factory over here. And then our class is of the home fragment class uh, class the, the Java the name. And if this match this one, then we want to return our home fragment and pass our API key, right? So we need to pass the API key. So that's it. So that's a class that we have to create uh, any name that you can, uh, and extend that one with the frag fragment factory. And then whatever uh, the whatever you require as a constructor, the dependency over in our constructor, then you have to pass it over here. And similarly, we check for the each, each of the class that we have to provide the dependency and we just create a new uh, instance of that one and pass that particular dependency over there. So this is how we are actually using it. So we check for the class name and if the class name matches this particular class name, then we create this fragment. And if the, we check for another home fragment, if the class name is matched then we just provide uh, create that particular home fragment instance passing that particular uh, requirement of the dependency so let's close this one and uh, now we have this particular two and uh, let's go to our i think application module i think we have already provided it over here so we don't have to provide this particular api key and the database name so if you if you are providing something different then you have to create it otherwise it's not going to be available for to provide because we have already added this database name and the uh, the api key and provided it over here the instance that we have provided so it should be able to inject it in our where is that particular class the app fra fragment app fragment uh, factory right so here is the one so if you have an if you have an, if you are adding something extra over here make sure you have provided it over here the dependency that in the module that you have to provide it otherwise it will be not available for to inject so let's go back to our main fragment first of all and if everything's work fine over here and also you can just enter this one or make it as a database name to okay so that should be fine so if everything works fine and it, then the dependency is injected and we are able to get that database name and sell it in our text view over here so what we have to do now is i think we can just go and test run it so let me remove all of this unwanted dependency from here and uh, let us try to run our application 
and the application just launched but uh, we are not setting the fragment over here and we don't have actually any error which means that dependency was successful but if we want to show that particular fragment we have to go back to our activity over here and we need to add that particular fragment over here so we can remove this one and we are not going to use that one and we need to change this one to our uh, fragment container view so we need to change this one to fragment container view and i need to add an id over here let's say uh main fragment container and yeah i think that should be the thing that we need to add over here and once we have a fragment container we can attach the fragment over here so how we can do that is let's go back to our main activity and uh, in the main activity we need to instantiate our so let's go and inject it first of all inject and we need a let init var of our f fragment factor f-r-a-g-m-e-n-t fragment factory so it's not the home fragment it should be of the app fragment uh, factory right so this is the one that we need and this will we have already added the inject over here so that should be able to provide and uh, then uh, we have already at android entry point so we can sorry main activity so we already have an entry point so we can inject it and then once uh, we have this so let's go down i think somewhere over let me leave it just as it is for now and just go over here and i need to make use of a supported fragment manager and dot the fragment factory which we can add this particular app fragment factory so once we have this factory set up for our fragment manager now we can use a supported fragment manager dot uh, begin the transaction dot and then replace our fragment so container view is r dot the id dot we have the main fragment container and then the class that we want fragment class that we want to instantiate is of the main fragment okay and then just the class dot java and then third parameter we need to pass the arc or the bundle so we can just say no because we are not going to pass any of it and then finally i can just uh, set the uh, add to back stack and then i have any okay so i can add the tag over here Let's just get the uh, tag over here and then just a uh, dot i can commit the change okay so that should be fine and uh, that should add a fragment for us so let us try to run and then we'll go back to our device and now you can see we get that particular uh, database variable name injected over here so if we go to the main fragment you can see we are now we are able to get that database name and we were able to use it in our fragment and we were able to set it to our text view so uh, next thing is that you can just add this as to your sign main you can just go and set up the the home fragment and when you click this button you should be able to go to the uh, our home fragment that we have and then you should be able to get that api key and then set it to on your text view so that's your assignment and i hope you will be able to do that and if you are not then that's fine we will see how we can do this in our next lecture